let me tell you something. I used to crave a substance. Mm. Never mind a substance. Let's say substances. Let's cover how I stopped the cravings. First of all, because I was young, I didn't know no other way. Mm. And I thought, if you crave, then you need to use. Like, there is no other way. And you know, my using was pre-planned. So never mind using and planning after you get the craving. I would plan way in advance before I even got the craving because I knew that I'd get the craving and before the craving, my plan would be ready. One morning I woke up and when I opened my eyes, I noticed that I was in a corridor sitting mm. on a disability chair and I looked around and it was a hospital that I was in and I thought, what am I doing here? And then I realized, okay, I got into some situation last night and I remember landing in, briefly landing in the hospital, but I don't remember sitting in a chair in a corridor. And it looks like I've slept all night in this, in this chair. And I knew that first thing that I thought about when I woke up was obviously I looked around to think where I was, but then the first thing I thought was, I'm going to start to need drugs. I'm going to start to use, need to use a substance by the night comes a bit of like a vampire th thirsty for blood and I thought I don't have any plan in place that was really me I was like a night walker and it's funny that my mum used to say like these thieves go out in the night and why are you going in the night for and I used to ignore her and I used to think to myself well that's who I am um, but I wasn't happy with who I was but I just felt like I didn't have a choice. Anyway so I asked the nurse I was like what am I doing here like what am I doing in the hospital and she goes well, we're getting you a bed to sleep in. And I was like, well, I don't need a bed, like I'm fine. And she was like, uh, well, last night you were saying that you had nowhere to stay. Um, so we're preparing a bed for you and you can stay in the bed. And I knew that I ain't gonna get no access to any sort of drugs here. So I would need to get out of here like ASAP. So I was like, oh man, you know what? I've got somewhere to go. I've got somewhere to stay tonight. So I'm gonna have to leave if that's all right. She was quite a kind nurse because like who gives a bed to someone that like, doesn't kind of need it? Like, I did have like um, a side of my face swollen up that night, but we both knew that, you know, I don't really need a bed just for that. So I got out of the hospital and I began to make my plan like I normally do. It's the plan. So without a plan, there cannot be any sort of action. And without a craving, there cannot be a plan. And then without an association, there cannot be any cravings. So let's rewind that. But how it normally works is you have an association. That association then leads you into a craving. Now, the association is something that reminds you of could be your past trauma. It could be your some sort of depression that triggers you, something that triggers you into depression. Anything that associates you to your problem, and that could even be your drug use. So anything that associates you, reminds you of using drugs. That is an association. That is like a file that opens up in your mind. Then that association, if you're on, on any sort of drugs, will then go into craving. So then you'll start to crave now the drug of your choice. Once you start craving the drug of your choice after the association, then you'd go into planning. Okay, so when I was in the hospital, my association just woke, got to me because waking up was an association for me because I knew I'm gonna start withdrawing soon. And I probably was withdrawing in the night most of the times. So I, I know 100% I'm gonna start withdrawing soon. So that was my association the minute I would wake up. And when I'd wake up, um, I got that association. Um, and then, then I started beginning to get the crave. But when I was in hospital, I knew that I can't make a plan here. So I had to leave the hospital. Never mind the action, but I didn't even get to it. So it's normally association, craving. You make the plan on how you're going to get these drugs and use these drugs. And then it will go into the action bit where you would action it. So if you get an association and you stop it right there, so you do something else instead, or you have um, another way on dealing with it, then you'll be all right. But if you go into the craving mode, now we're getting a bit risky here. Um, a good 33% of it now, um, you get more towards using the drug. So you give in now, uh, you can give in on, on the craving. So when you get the association, if you don't stop it there, you go into the crave. And then once you're craving the drug, if you don't stop it there in any sort of way, maybe speak with someone, um, change the plan, like go home instead or so forth, or make a, a good plan rather than you using, um, 
then you've gone past good 70% now. Once you make the plan, association, craving and plan. Once you make the plan, now there is no stopping you. Now you've gone into full 100% mode of using. Because now you've planned what you're going to do. Another good way of get, getting dopamine is the plan most of the time. So whatever we do, yes, we get that reward and we feel better and we get them dopamine hits when we use drugs or do anything else in life, maybe eat or have sex or whatever it is. But most of the time, the greater thing around it is the plan. So when we plan it and then we be successful in that plan, that gives us the dopamine. So for example, if you plan to have a shower, start to get ready to, to go into the shower. And when you smell like your favorite, say shampoo or the soap, or you can feel the heat of the water, dopamine begins to release. You feel better. I don't know if, how many of you feel better after having a shower because you've planned it. So when you have the shower and you've, you're successful, you feel much, much better. And then that gives you that reward factor within your brain, that sense of achievement, that you've achieved this, that you planned previously. And have you noticed when your plans don't go correct? So say, for example, you want to go to a restaurant with your family and you tell everybody maybe that, oh, we're going to go to the restaurant today at six o'clock and, you know, all day maybe at work you're thinking about it you plan it with your family that you're going to go up about six o'clock and then you ring them up about three o'clock or four o'clock when they open at five and then you say to them oh can i get a table for say six people and they say oh sorry we're fully booked how bad do you feel then do you feel kind of like really down and that's because that dopamine hasn't hit because you haven't been successful in what you want to do you haven't had that reward now you haven't had that achievement you would need to change that plan then for you to be successful in something else for then that dopamine to start to release as you're getting closer to what you want to be successful in so it's the plan that's the biggest issue because once you've made the plan now you're going to action it now you're going to go ahead and do everything you can in your power to achieve that to get that reward to have that sense of achievement and then, then to make yourself feel better so it's best to cut it off by the time it goes from association to craving you need to get it cut off there if you can't get it cut off there and you go into craving more by any, any chance and you're not that self-aware then you need to stop it with a before making a plan you cannot make a plan that's why with a lot of suicide patients they always ask them is there a plan have you made a plan so making a plan in bad things that you don't want to do in your life isn't a good idea best idea is to switch that urge then and then to make it into a plan that you'd rather do so for example if you're thinking um if you've, if you've had, had an association it could be something past trauma of some sort and you thought okay to make yourself a bit better probably you would need some drugs or say you've just had some sort of association with drugs and you think oh you know what i, I, I don't mind some drugs today and that could be anything small that could just be um somebody that's ringing you that knows your dealer even that that's like very very far away long distance but you know you'd still sometimes start to begin to get that crave after that association it's a trigger association is like a trigger so when you got triggered and you got that association then you're going to think okay um let's start to make a plan about this if i would now this is, this is how you, your thinking process would be like you know if i would had to use like you know if i really wanted to i could do this or i should do that um that's not the way to go about it so once you get the you need to be self-aware with this once you get the association and then the urge you need to kick it into a plan which ain't gonna get you to use in any sort of way so whether that's make a plan on going home and cooking some dinner going home putting your feet up going home and watching a movie linking someone up that will watch a movie with you maybe um going out of town like something else that would still give you that dopamine hit through that reward of that achievement when you're successful it's the same thing it's exactly the same thing but here you're doing something more healthy 
than something like negative in your life and unhealthy and an unhealthy habit. So that's one thing that you'd need to um, get sorted when you get any sort of cravings. And that's what I use. How self-aware are you? Obviously, if you're fully blown like I was, you don't have no sort of awareness. Your awareness is compromised. And you most of the time work on this subconscious mind of yours, which is autopilot. So how subconscious mind works, everything that you got in your memory on how you do things or what you do after the thought, whatever action you put in, it would just run on autopilot. So you wouldn't really have to do any thinking around it um, because you're so used to doing it every time. If you drive yourself or you know anyone else that drives and you can ask them that, is there times where you've just zoned out while you're driving? Do you consciously then think about which gears that you need to choose your steering wheel or your pedals like the speed do you like concentrate on that and do you consciously move them and they'll tell you or if you drive yourself you'd know that you don't if you zone out and you're thinking about somewhere else the past or the future you'd just be on autopilot and you'd be driving and you'll get to your destination safely like you won't need me to worry and then sometimes you probably wake up consciously and you need to make a decision you probably need to get off the next exit on the motorway or a car has come in front of you then you make decisions so our decisions are mostly made when we consciously make them. And what we do as a subconscious thing on autopilot is what auto happens automatically. We use some sort of substance or alcohol. Um, when we consistent, we normally just use that subconsciously because we've done it so many times. And we know like, if this is the thought process we're getting, if we get an association, um, we begin to crave then on, on autopilot we're just going to make the plan to action it to make ourselves feel better so if we consciously then make that decision that okay i'm driving my vehicle but i need to jump off this exit so you're going to stop there you're going to consciously think and look at the exit you're going to be like oh this ain't the exit that i want to take it's the next one you made that plan now and that's what you're going to do you're going to take the second exit instead same with using you know that i'm not going to make this plan because I know if I make this plan, I'm going to execute it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a better plan and I'm going to probably go home and put my feet up or watch a movie or contact someone. And I'm going to see them instead, do any sort of other activity. So if you know you're using drugs in the, in the night, then it's best to cover that night period. And if you're not using drugs in the morning, then it's best to cover that period. Maybe go to the gym in the morning or maybe go do some exercise or any sort of activity, play snook or something in the night. That's when you subconsciously you're doing this. You're going to do this in autopilot at that time. So pl please make a different plan and put that into your action then and see how you feel because you're going to get the same reward. That same dopamine is going to be released and you're going to have that same sense of achievement. Okay, so let's say you're with a friend or a couple of friends and they've come down and you ain't used drugs for some time. Then you just use with them like, without even knowing and you're like, well, what happened there? Why did I just use? So obviously, first of all, them, you seeing them is a trigger. Okay, it's an association straight away, drugs. That's the first thing you're gonna think because that's all you've ever done with them or that's what they do and you know that. So you're gonna get that association. When you see their face, you're gonna get that urge. You're gonna think, okay, now you know, I wanna get this done. I wanna use some sort of drugs. So you're gonna get that craving. Once you've got that craving, you're gonna go into the plan mode, but they're your friends. They might have already planned it. They already might have drugs on them. They already going to score. So you don't need to go into all of that. You're just now sitting in the passenger seat more than the driver seat and they're working on their subconscious. So you subconsciously just working with them without any controls, whatever plans they make, you're going to go by them and then you're going to action that plan to you. It's going to be like you did it because you had that association. You had that urge. They made the plan, but then you actioned it. You're going to feel like an achievement that you've had that achievement. You're going to feel like you executed that plan that they told you about and you're going to get that dopamine and that reward factor within your brain. So that's why it's hard for us when we're between friends that are using. And I'm not and I'm sure you've heard this a lot of times, maybe at the addiction services or um, your doctors or your parents have told you. And this is why it's because who you are around most of the time is who you kind of become over time. So whether you say to yourself that you won't and you know what you're doing and so forth, I want to be in that position that where you're going to get the craving, where you're going to get the association, the craving, you know, the action, the plan that they're going to make and you're going to action it, then it's best to stay away from them. It's best not to see them for a good, a good time. And normally it's 
between one year to 18 months, 12 months to 18 months for you to be like proper clean. So maybe after that, you can choose choose to see them or not. But it is still risky if you're not good with um, what you're doing subconsciously that's different. So if you subconsciously normally using, then subconsciously on autopilot, you're just going to go and do that. But if you've changed them plans of yours, eventually, when you get issues like these triggers and stuff, you will subconsciously be doing something else. Like today, that's what I do. I know if I get triggered in any sort of way, I don't use no matter what, where I was before. But now I don't even really need to plan things. My plan is made maybe the day before, the minute I wake up and beneficial, that's more beneficial for me and they're more healthy for me. So that's my plans already made. So I think when you're using uh, some sort of substance or you're on alcohol, your whole day is most of the time empty. And even if you go to work, before work and after work, it's empty. So if you've obviously planned other stuff, then you're going to just plan that and execute that to then get your dopamine uh, to have that sense of achievement. But if you haven't planned to think around your work after work or before work, then it's going to be a bit hard for you. Um, so what I would say is just plan it, pre-plan that. How I used to pre-plan using my drugs, and I'm sure a lot of people, people do that. Pre-plan other things. Pre-plan what else you're going to do after before work, tomorrow, day after. You know, put in hourly slots if you have to. But as long as that's planned, then you ain't going to get no issues in, in terms of what you're going to do after a trigger and your association and planning to use drugs and then action in it. You're not going to get no issues like that. So I think that's one of the best, best ways to conquer cravings. It's the best way. And I get a lot of people saying to me that, oh, you're getting craving to use drugs. What do I do then and so forth? And this is the best video for you. Um, if you are getting cravings, then what I've told you in this video are the best tips that you can use. Thank you.